So this analysis is also called a traffic signal analysis based on the color patterns used in this 3x3 uh, matrix. So uh, depending on whether a business is strong, average and weak and depending on whether the industry is highly attractive, medium attractive or low attractive, strategies can be devised basis of the location of the particular SBU in these cells. Now coming to industry attractiveness factors, which kind of, what, what factors are taken into this category of uh, analysis? Well, whether an industry is attractive or not is determined according to GE is determined by these factors such as market size and growth rate. Now if you remember in the BCG analysis also we had taken this market growth rate as the single factor. This is the beauty of GE analysis that the granularity of analysis is so much higher because of several other factors which have been taken into consideration which was which were um, absent or not taken into consideration in the BCG analysis. So industry profit margins. Now this is different from company profit margins. Industry profit margins are, is, uh, is determ determined by the number of suppliers, their own bargaining power, the number of buyers, their bargaining power, the cost of uh, procurement of materials, the cost of procurement of technology, several factors or several other criteria determine the industry profit margin. There are other factors like the competition, the severity of competition, intensity of competition, amount of competition. These are very uh, close but different factors. The intensity of competition being whether these companies have entered a price war, are, comp are players reducing prices every season or every year or annually or maybe even uh, less than a year's time. That is intensity of competition. The amount of competition means there could be major players and there could be smaller players. But there are a large number of players. That is amount of competition. So seasonality means the patterns, uh, patterns of demand which undergo certain changes and they are predictable. Seasonality means you can predict whether a certain product is going to have a certain uh, peak in demand at a certain time of the year or maybe after every two years there is normally a downfall in the demand patterns. So that is seasonality. Cyclicality means again a reversal of crest and trough of business cycles. Maybe a product which, uh, which is declining can be revived. Maybe a product which has just been introduced might decline suddenly. Cyclicality, predictability of a product's uh, life cycle, uh, predictability of the demand of a product's um, uh, 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 demand of a product or demand for a product depending on the uh, quality, depending on the seasonality and other factors. Economies of scale basically uh, is a um, company specific, it is normally considered a company specific uh, uh, feature but economies of scale can be industry specific also. There, could, there are industries in which if you increase the scale of production, normally you will achieve economies. But there are other industries. If you increase your amount of production, not necessary that the demand will also increase, not necessary that your, your, you will achieve economies of scale. Now this is not just economies of scale in production that we are talking about, other economies also, advertising economies of scale, promotional economies of scale, they might not be similar across the board for, uh, for each company in the industry and this might not be similar for different industries also in the same market. The final group of factors that are taken is the pestle factors. We have discussed this before. Pestle basically is a uh, collection of political, economical, social, technological, ecological and legal factors which impact business. Obviously, if there is political turbulence in an economy, the industry will not be, uh, people will, or uh, they might not like to invest in such an economy. If there is uh, economic prosperity in a certain geography, then obviously industry would be attracted. People will come rushing in to invest in this uh, economy or geography. Similarly, if there is social adoption of this product that you are that you're operating in or that you wish to sell, then obviously in the industry or the geography will look it attractive to you. 
if there is a very fast changing technology being used by the uh, by the players in this domain very fast changing if you need to upgrade your technology every one or two years i mean major overhauls then it is a very capital intensive industry wherein equipment needs to be overhauled every two years or maybe altogether changed every two or three years then that's a very capital intensive industry and it's not going to be very attractive to you similarly if the legal factors they favor business then industry will find it very attractive if laws are not very stable laws are being revised every one or two years or with the change of every government laws are being revised then the legal factors will will render this particular geography very unattractive for business anyway those are the industry attractiveness factors moving on to the business strength factors which is taken in the horizontal axis there are another group of factors such as relative market share if you have observed here we have market growth rate as the first factor in industry attractiveness and relative market share as the first factor in business strength factors now these two factors were present in the bcg analysis also that is how the g nine cell matrix improves over the is an improvement over the bcg analysis in which it provides much higher granularity on the basis of which you can conduct much better analysis of each of your individual sbus so a relative market share uh, as you would observe these are also some internal uh, aspects of the organization relative market share refers to the amount of uh, or the share of market that the uh, company or the brand in question has the brand which we are analyzing it has with respect to the market leader similarly profit margin if you would observe there is an industry profit margin here but this side profit margin indicates the company's own profit margin now in an industry the profit margin could be low at the same time the company's own profit margins could be decent could be higher than or lower than industry profit margins that could happen if your profit margins are better than the industry average then obviously it is a strength it is a potential strength for your organization if on the other hand industry profit margins are better than you, the margins that you are gaining then it is a sign of weaknesses or potential weakness price quality cap uh, competitive capability how capable you are to balance price and quality can you or are you experienced enough or do you have enough expertise to offer a decent quality at an affordable price are you capable enough to offer very high quality products at least costs or lowest prices because that will determine the longevity or the amount of time you can survive in a industry so market knowledge market and customer knowledge this will determine how you are going to differentiate yourself or reposition yourself uh, vis a vis the competition a company or people in a company if they have very uh, detailed information about how a customer behaves or how a group of customers behave then they are in better position to design a product which is highly differentiated based on certain or particular and very specific needs of the consumers so market knowledge strengths and weaknesses well these are generic strengths and weaknesses as in r&d capabilities technological position of the company these are certain factors included in strengths and weaknesses technological capabilities um, what kind of equipment you use what kind of processes you use uh, have they been upgraded very recently are you up to date with the latest technology that is being used in the market and management caliber is your ceo a risk taking person or a risk averting person are your cxos the best in the market or have they just continued in a company for a very long time despite some lacuna so these are both lists these are two lists of industry attractiveness and business strength factors which will determine where in these nine cells 
your SBU is going to feature. Now, if you remember in the BCG analysis, we taken a company, a group of companies that is ABC and we had given it seven products P1, P2 through P7, seven products or seven brands which were operating in different kinds of markets. Some of them were operating in high growth markets, some of them were operating in uh, slow growth markets, but they had different market shares. In some cases, we found that P1 was a, a star product, P2, P3 were cash cows and so on. So, we will continue the same analysis here. We will assume that P1 has high business strength as in it has high relative market share, it is able to generate high profit margins and its quality is also pretty high as compared to its price with relation to its price. So, we will consider that it is a strong business and it is operating in a attractive industry which will lead us to put P1 either uh, in either of these three cells. Uh, we find that the industry attractiveness is high and its own business strength capabilities are also high. So, we put it in this quadrant or this cell. Now, P2 and P3 we conducted analysis in the other class where we found that P2 and P3 were operating in slow growing markets but their own cash, uh, their own relative market share was pretty high. So, strength, these were strong businesses and they operated in a high grow, uh, slow growing market. So, the industry attractiveness, I mean the growth rate was low, industry attractiveness was low, but their own market share was pretty high. So, we can put them here. Similarly, for the other uh, uh, product categories, we will just put them for sake of analysis in the box and we will go on to analyze what they mean actually. Now, coming to this part where we have a color code analysis. As you observe these three cells are colored green, these three are colored yellow and these three are colored red. What do these colors mean? Basically, they are strategic signals. So, for product P1, which is located in a green cell, what is the strategic advice given by GE experts or consultants? They advise that all products which find themselves in the green cells should either invest or expand. When should they expand and when should they invest? Now, the company should decide to invest in a SBU if it further sees growth or scope of growth in that particular market segment. If it sees that okay, there is still some uh, market share to be grabbed, then it should expand. Also, if it, it, is, it, it wishes to expand geographically, then it may enter into some other geography or that way also it, it can expand. So, in both cases, these are positive signs for all SBUs yellow cells, GE advises cells. If you find your SBUs in these cells, you should either select or earn, meaning you have spent enough time. As you see, here the industry attractiveness is low in this cell. Industry attractiveness is low, but your own business strength is pretty high. Your business is strong. Similarly, here is a case, the middle cell has both medium attractiveness and average strength. Here, although the relative market share is, I mean the business strength is less, but the industry is still attractive. So, there is still some market to be captured, some market share to be won. So, it still has these three cells, they still have some potential to expand this uh, have some potential to earn, but the company must be selective which SBUs can be invested in to further grow that is how it should be selective and which SBUs must be avoided for investment they only should be chosen to make or give earnings 
continue to earn, continue to get revenues from these SBUs. The last one that remains is the red sales. G advises that all SBUs which feature in these three cells, they must either be harvested without expanding, expanding anymore, without, without expanding anymore, the company should choose to continue earning without any costs incurred or if the situation is really bad, like in this cell, the industry is not attractive at all and its own business is going weak. In that case, the company should decide to divest. It should choose to divest. So that is about the GE 9 cell matrix. It's a really popular tool. As you can see, it's a very, it has very high granularity because of the number of items used to evaluate each SBU. I hope the explanation was clear to you. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, we will meet again in the next, uh, next class with another tool of portfolio analysis. Thank you very much.